Careful with that, not lifting up too heavy. Okay, I have to do it again. The Civil War's probably fought here. Local legends say that some of the soldiers that died in the battle were buried here. And it's right behind our school. At Carmanor Primary School in Leeds, the children are digging up the school field. It's not an act of rebellion, but a search for evidence of a past rebellion, the Civil War. Behind the school fence is Fairfax Mound, where soldiers from local skirmishers are said to be buried. It's all rusty. It's got all rust on it. Yeah. Do you if it was clean, what colour would it be? Like bluey black. Like, like shiny, like blue. With the help of university lecturer Andy Bowles, along with some of his students, years three and five are looking for traces of the school's exciting past. This archaeology project belongs to the children. This activity turns children on to learning. I don't know, I'm not sure if it's a piece of pot or a stone. Cause it's got a smooth bottom, so it might just be something. Well, the idea behind the project is to give children a taste of archaeology and archaeology, archaeological method and things. It shows them how things arrive in museums. More importantly, perhaps, it's showing them that history happens everywhere, not just in school history books or in Bath or in Hadrian's Wall, but here in Leeds. At the start of the day, this archaeological site was just a corner of the school playing field. We start by digging not one large trench, as you might expect, but by several small trenches. Uh, we've done three this morning, so that gives a small group of children their own area to work with and sort of gives them the ownership of it. Usually we start, if we're working with primary schools, by taking the turf off ourselves. After that, though, it's with the children. So they do digging, they do troweling, Learning how to use tools safely is an important part of the experience. Tell you a little bit about the tools that we've got and things like that. Do you know what that is? Yeah? A spade. No, it's not a spade. Anybody else got an idea? Yeah? Trowel. It's a trowel, that's it, exactly. That's a spade. That's a trowel. They can't hurt anybody. It's the idiot that's holding it that gets to hurt people. So you're going to be sensible, aren't you, working for me? Because I don't want anybody to get hurt, right? The business end of any tool shouldn't be where you can't see it. Because if you do that, it's danger. You can't see what's going on behind you, can you? Yeah, that's one of them. Remember you said shoulder height, or you could hurt somebody. It's about history, but it's partly science as well, you see. And unlike the science experiments you do in school, I don't know what's going to go on. In school, school science teacher knows what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen here. We started off with an idea here. We've talked to the children about this possible civil war skirmish. We wondered if there might be any evidence of it in the school grounds. Do you know what it looks like to me? Put it that way up. Have you ever been camping? Oh, it could be a camping cup where you like put... Like a tent peg, couldn't it? Yeah. Oh, but did it have Well, I don't know, they might have set up camp in the civil war. When a child finds an object, the child is directly in contact with the past in a way that nobody apart from the person who's lost the object has ever been. This was found this morning. Okay. What do you think it is? Well, I think that um, it's from a little um, action figurine. Yeah, like a, a little a little doll, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. No. I think I found know. some pot maybe. The sun might have just covered it all up and... Yeah, it's quite shiny as well, isn't it? Yeah, and it's got kind of edges on it. Yeah, it's lovely. History is all about being able to research the past, isn't it, rather than just learning facts. There's other skills as well which aren't just the historical ones. They're, they're learning, they're working well together in a team, um, but they've also got all these lovely tools that they get a chance to learn and it's just a you know an opportunity that they they wouldn't have at home i think it's part of um, a pot yeah because it's got like edges on it so it might be because that might just join yeah. onto there like that yeah it might have just shattered yeah because look there's little bits there's lots of it here they're identifying things that are important and things that actually can be discarded from the dig so they need to be aware that 
you know, they're going to find things that, that aren't going to give us clues to the past, but they're also picking out things that, oh, yeah, look at that, that's some evidence that we need to keep. Ooh, there are lots of worms in here. In there. Keep on finding more and more of this pot. In these pits, I've found, like, seven pieces of pot and quite a lot of coal and, and some brick. I'm hoping to find a horseshoe. We don't think we'll find a body because you, like, it's very unlikely. I found lots of rock and lots of charcoal, but I haven't found anything like old. Down there I found five pieces of pot. We've been using a metal detector because down in the forest it used to be a path. <laughs> We think it may be a stone, hard gravel, or we may think it's something metal. We have no idea. We put it under the metal detector with Michaela's holding, and it went to 95. That's the highest you can get. I think they're learning every aspect of um, the curriculum that we cover. There's lots of history going on, and especially when they were doing um, using their metal detectors. It's obvious that that could be adapted for all sorts of things back in the classroom, so sort of maths, ICT, geography. So there's the whole curriculum being covered without even realising. The use of the metal detectors leads to a situation where when objects are found, students can ask questions such as what is it, why is it there, who used it, what is it made of? Back in class, Kai Payton from the British Museum explains the importance of artefacts. Can you see from the side that funny shape there? Yeah, it looks like all wavy. It does look like wavy, but this is because um, at the time this was made, it was really fashionable and really trendy to wear big buckles on your shoes. And this is about the same time as the Battle of Leeds and the Civil War. So it's about the same time as the stuff that you've been looking at when you've been doing your excavation today. Do you know how many hundred years old that is? Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Well done. But the learning doesn't end here. Over the weeks that follow, the children will be taking part in some exciting cross-curricular follow-up work. Finds such as a doll's leg, a 1930s marble and pieces of metal possibly from a toy car are used as a stimulus for literacy. So, our Walt today, we're going to create a storyboard and we're going to write a detailed story using an object as a stimulus. And we're going to use one of the objects that you guys found on your archaeological dig. So we've got two children playing on the field with their special toy. Now that's either going to be the marble or their doll, or the car, because they're the three things that we found. So we're going to write about the one of those three things. Something suddenly has got to happen, something to really distract your characters, to, to distract the owners, to make them leave their favourite toy. And the final thing I want you to think about in your pairs is years later, who is it found by? So with your partner, get a couple of those ideas down on your board for me. They realise that they've lost a toy because um, they just left it on the floor and they didn't pick it up. But now they're like, the snow's come down and... Maybe it has a stone pocket. Yeah, so like, if he's in the snow, someone... No, it was, it was the ground. So years later, the toy is found by other children and they wonder where it came from and who it used to belong to. So I'll leave you to develop those ideas in your story. So, so I'd like you to do now, I'd like you to have a nice clear idea of where your story is going to go in your mind. So use the storyboards you've got in front of you on your whiteboards, the ideas that you've just heard your classmates come up with. So think very clearly, who are your characters? It was a cloudy afternoon when you have your characters, who are your characters? Okay guys, you've done some fantastic work. I've had a bit of a look at some of your stories and I've chosen somebody I'd like to read their story out. Matty, do you want to stand up where you are and read your story for us? The Lost Car. A few years ago it was a gloomy Monday morning and Kingston and Matty were playing with their gold and silver toy cars on the wet dripping grass of the school field. Later, during a school project, some children were digging with some archaeologists and they unearthed the old and rusty toy cars. 
Examples of the pupils' work and the finds from the dig are on display in the museum, otherwise known as the school hall. The pupils act as museum guides, showing parents and other pupils round. And this is pottery stoneware, probably storage jars from about 1900s to 1930s. I found, I found it um, about to the right of the pit and I think these two bits fit together. Here, there's a poem. Smoking a pipe, smoking a pipe. If after you've eaten your pipe, made from wood, made from clay, don't go near children when they play. By Emily, Emily and Suman, class 5B. She drew this, which was a replica from Abbey House, isn't it? By Samuel Strong. This looks a bit new. Looks a bit familiar. Even though they call this a museum to show what some people digged up, I think it's better than a normal museum yeah. because you get to touch everything and plus you get to feel like how it feels and, and you how get to it and you get to um, like see what you found and it's more interesting than just yeah. what other yeah. people. Maybe a lot of people would think that this was a mad thing to do. But actually, it's not mad at all. It's about part of the journey that this school is on to make learning a wealthy experience for our children. Well, if we haven't got a future generation of archaeologists, we've certainly got children who've enjoyed this week. I might want to be an archaeologist when I grow up, but I've got other dreams to fulfil as well, so don't really know. I would like to be an archaeologist because I love like digging up the past. My other dreams are either being a rapper or an um, or being a footballer. It's full of them just sat there doing lessons. This is excellence and enjoyment, isn't it? And look at them, <laughs> they're having a great time and, and they're learning something. It's better than doing like history. You get to actually see like the past instead of just learning about it. I felt like I was an archaeologist because I was digging up real life instead of in the classroom digging up on the smart board. There was lots of things happened long ago and it wasn't just like a plain average world, lots of like wars and stuff happened. I would encourage anyone to repeat a process that makes learning fun for children, makes it real for children and brings the past to life. For a school wanting to do this, the first thing to do would be to look around your own community and find out what groups there might be to help. Find somebody who knows a little bit about the area, perhaps. Maybe if you've got a local archaeology group, contact them, ask them if they'd like to work with the school for a little bit, because all of these things are going to be part of the working. Any school can do this. Dig anywhere in England and Wales, and you will find evidence of the past. If you look at the school history books, they're dealing with the Romans, you'll see about Bath, you'll see about Hadrian's Wall, you might take him, I don't know, to York or something, to one of the big Roman centres, and you get the idea, or at least they get the idea, that history didn't happen in their own town. And through doing archaeology, you can prove to them in a practical sense that history happens everywhere, because they'll find it under their feet. History happened everywhere. This could happen anywhere. Mama!